It's being called the hot labor summer. From Hollywood to hotels, workers have been walking off the job. For the first time in history, the United Auto Workers Union is striking against all big three automakers at once. One day stronger! One day longer! One day stronger! Something's got to give. We've organized buildings to fix the AC, trailer park residents to fight a new jail that would displace them, and neighborhoods to snatch back tens of millions in tax giveaways to gentrifying developers. We have written and passed a tenant's bill of rights. We've won free lawyers for every tenant facing eviction. We've organized buildings and neighborhoods. And just recently, we elected four members of city council. Thousands of people in our city went to the polls today and they voted with the tenant union. Yeah! 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 That is so revolutionary. Do you feel that? I live in Kansas City, where I organize with the citywide tenant union, KC Tenants. Good afternoon, everyone. It's so good to see you, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm Alexi McCammond, an opinions editor here at The Washington Post. As you just saw from this video, I'm so happy to be joined by Tara Ragavir, the director of KC Tenants. They're trying to make Kansas City ground zero for tenants' rights and affordable housing. I'd love if you could start just by telling us in a few sentences, which of course is hard to encapsulate all of your work, exactly how you're trying to do that, paint a picture for us what that work looks like in Kansas City. Sure, thank you so much for having me. Of course. Um, we founded KC Tenants in 2019. Three women, Tiana Caldwell, Brandy Granados, and Diane Charity, all of whom had been deeply impacted by housing insecurity, got together and they decided that enough was enough and that their city was worth fighting for, and that it could feel inevitable that developers would get richer as they got priced out. It could feel inevitable that a coffee would cost $5 and their rent would triple and they wouldn't have any place to live anymore. But none of that was actually inevitable, not if we started to organize. So we started a tenant union back in 2019, which has grown to be the citywide tenant union in Kansas City, Missouri. We have 9,467 members. We've elected members of city council. We've fought for and passed citywide policy. We've organized buildings and trailer parks to fix conditions and snatch back millions of dollars from gentrifying developers. And all of this is within the context of the tenant union, which is the vehicle that we're really invested in continuing to grow. You know, I think when we think about affordable housing and people talking about these inevitabilities, there's a certain level of shame that folks might feel when they're renting. If they can't make rent, if they have to move in with someone who might be abusive to help them pay for rent, you are describing what to me feels like a clear political identity for this movement, maybe for the first time. I wonder if you agree with that and how you think about the movement and your role in building a political identity for these renters. Yeah, absolutely. We talk about tenants as a political class, and that is sort of a new idea in this country where tenant, if it's an identity at all, is it has been an identity of shame. We're taught to aspire for ownership, right? But we're ignoring the fact when we rest on that aspiration that ownership has not been accessible to many communities in this country ever. So tenant we're reclaiming as an identity of power. And a lot of the work of what we do in a tenant union is actually translating private pain into public power. Mm -hmm. And that power actually comes in the form of collective, right? The theory of a union is very simple. We're stronger together than we are as individuals. Our landlords are nameless and face faceless to many of us. They're big corporations. They don't live in our towns. We individually don't matter to them. We're line items in their budget. We're disposable. But when we get together and when we can withhold our rent or take some other kind of collective action, then we matter and then we're powerful. 
How much of it, in your experience, is appealing to folks' hearts over their minds? When you talk about these personal stories, I can't help but be moved. I'm sure other people are feeling things in the room. When you're trying to get some sort of legislation passed or fight for tenants' rights in some way, how much of those personal stories do you share with folks in power versus sort of just a policy idea or agenda? You know, we say a lot that the people closest to the problem are the closest to the solutions. Mm. So everything that we do has people who are directly impacted at the center of it. But the limitation that we observe all the time is that decision makers, even the media, are willing to listen to people's story of pain, mm. but not willing to trust their expertise. So actually, there is a limit to the hearts part of this. Yeah. And a lot of what we're trying to do is really position tenants as the experts of their own experience and the makers of their own liberation. Um, it's not a project that's done yet by any means, but the tenant union is a powerful vehicle that takes us in that direction. What's one type of power or right that you would hope renters could have if you could snap your fingers and change things tomorrow? We need rent regulation. We need regulations on the annual rent increases that landlords are able to impose on their tenants. Currently, the market is completely unregulated. It's the Wild West out there, right? Yeah. And you probably know this, know this as someone who lives in DC, rent, the rent is too damn high. <laughs> and the rent is too damn high, that's just a fact. Uh, just today, the CPI numbers came out, the Consumer Price Index reports that rent is the most enduring and most significant contributor to overall inflation. So there's an a large-scale macroeconomic impact to the rent. And then on a micro level, the rent is the biggest bill that most poor and working class people pay in this country. So fluctuations in the price of rent, it's not like fluctuations in the price of toilet paper or pens. Okay. It's a much, much more significant impact in people's budgets. Okay. And the most important intervention that we could make in terms of policy is stabilizing people in their homes by imposing rent regulations. We were talking uh, in the green room about different places that we've lived. Obviously, you're Kansas City-based. I'm here in DC now. I have lived in New York before. You've lived in Chicago before. Are there any model cities that you are looking to right now or that you think are on the right track, whether it is with respect to rent regulation or some other form of reform? The policy that's possible at the local level is really limited. In states like Missouri, where I live, Kansas City is limited in what they can do. Even if the general population of Kansas City supported something like rent regulation, it's preempted at the state level. And this is true in many, many states across the country, both blue and red. So really, we need federal level intervention when we're talking about something like rent regulation. What we can do in Kansas City and what we're trying to do is become a model city for building housing that's off of the the private market and not available for speculation and investment. So is there a model city in the US today? No. Mm. Um, Kansas City will be the model city. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in the meantime, we also just need federal intervention to regulate a market that has run completely amok. You know, in January, the Biden administration issued directives to help tenants amid rising housing costs. You have said you didn't think they went far enough. What should they do and what issue do you have with the steps that they have taken. Yeah. So in another capacity, I work with tenant unions across the country. We have 100 tenant unions coming to DC today, 100 tenants coming to DC today. From all across the country? From all across the country, from Louisville, uh, Kentucky, to Bozeman, Montana, and everywhere in between. And those tenants are here advocating for federal intervention. Mm. The rental market is so consolidated now, and that consolidation means that a few corporations have price setting power that sets a floor for rents across the country. Meanwhile, the federal government is in big business with our landlords. Mm. So the federal government backs $150 billion in federal, federally backed mortgages every year. And that is where the federal government actually has power and leverage. Even without congressional action, the Federal Housing Finance Agency could regulate rents by imposing conditions on those federally backed loans. Mm. Our theory is simple. If there's public money going to finance or subsidize private development of housing, that public money should come with strings attached. And some of those strings should be conditions like rent regulations. 
I know sometimes with activism and grassroots organizing through reporting and just watching on the ground, it can almost feel like you're shouting into the void sometimes when you don't see things getting done. Who has turned out to be a good partner, either behind the scenes or publicly at the federal level? Are you finding folks in the administration are receptive to what you all are talking about, or are you still kind of facing these blocks? We're still working through it, but you know the January announcements from the White House that you mentioned had a lot to do with the organizing that we've been doing for years. Mm -hmm. And we worked closely with the Biden administration to make sure that tenants were part of a conversation on housing and that housing was part of a conversation on the economy in a way that it has not been until recent years. So we're proud of some of that progress. We're also looking forward to the leadership that the director of the Federal Housing Finance Agency, Sandra Tom Thompson, will show on this issue. She has stuck our neck out and really prioritized tenants in a way that we haven't seen from the federal government yet. And there's a lot more work to do, right? I, I would argue that if the Biden administration doesn't have a plan on the rent specifically, they don't have a plan on the economy. And we're hoping to provide them a political opportunity to actually take some material action that would change a lot of lives. You mentioned 100 different tenants, part of this union across the country here in D.C. today. Of course, we wish they could be in the room with us. You can't tell us about all 100, but I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about Janae, who you helped run for city council. Unfortunately, she lost, but you went through that experience with her. And just kind of explain to us who is one of these people who belongs to the tenant union? What do they look like? Where are they coming from? What are they fighting for? Why should we all care? How can we relate to who they are? Right. Janae is amazing. Uh, she is one of my leaders in Kansas City. Um, and she was in this video. She was in this featured. video, yep. yes. She and I met back in 2019, around this time in 2019. And at the time, she was working overnights at Quick Trip, a local gas station. Uh, she's a single mom of twins. She's about my age, so she's 31. Um, she's black and grew up in a very white part of Kansas City, pretty alienated from her family and her community. And she found Casey Tennant during a really horrible time in her life. She had had to move her uh, abusive ex back in with her in order to afford the run. Mm -hmm. And it was a horrible compromise she had to make with herself that put herself and her kids in danger, but it was so that they could keep a roof over their head. So she found the tenant union, and we haven't been able to get rid of her since. She's been <laughs> amazing and has really grown as a leader within the union. Um, you know, she started organizing with our Tenants' Bill of Rights campaign. She then became our city hall liaison. She was one of our black organizing fellows. And then she responded when we asked her if she would run for city council, and she did. She ran an incredible race citywide and won 19,633 votes. She won 19,633 votes as a black single mom in a city on the border between a slave state and a free state, in a city where they call us radicals every day of the week. Mm -hmm. But the city came out for her. And she lost by just a small percentage point. But in the end, I think we actually won because we showed the city that the tenant union means business, that we're not going anywhere, and I got my best organizer back. <laughs> so, you know, Janae's just one story, but right. as you said, there's 100 tenants who are coming to DC today, and for all of them, the rent is too damn high, and for none of them, there's a path to home ownership. Something's gotta give, and the way that we are forging forward is through the tenant union. Yeah, and um, we'll have to wrap up soon, but you talked about Janae, 31, single black mother, I'm imagining they're old, young, of all different races, from obviously all across the country. You're noticing any differences uh, in age, or is it sort of just all 31-year-olds, all millennials? Do you see older folks who are still in this fight dealing not with at, this? Not at all. We Our age range at Casey Tennant's is like three years old to 73, wow. if not older. Some people aren't telling me their age, right? So there's, <laughs> there's a huge range of ages, races. The tenant union will be in the 21st century what the labor union was for poor and working class people in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is this is the vehicle that will connect people across race, across class, across age to forge together for a struggle that's led by the people who are the experts of their own experience. What we say about Casey Tenants all the time is that the union is something that n none of us has experienced, but all of us deserve. Well, that's uh, unfortunately all the time we have. So Tara, thank you so much for joining.